Welcome to a narrated virtual tour that takes you through the progression of U.S. military rotary wing aircraft. The tour involves helicopters, autogyros, and any other U.S. military rotary wing aircraft that I personally photographed or videoed, mostly at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, the National Naval Aviation Museum in Pensacola, Florida, the Smithsonian Udvar Hazi Center outside of Washington, D.C., or at air shows. Enjoy the video. Autogyros use rotary wings to create lift, but the rotors spin due to aerodynamics as the engine only provides forward motion but does not power the rotors. This modified Colette K2 has a 90 mile per hour cruising and 110 mile per hour top speed, but it could not hover as it had a 15 mile per hour stall speed. The U.S. Army tested both the K2 and K3 versions of the Colette Autogyro at Wright Field in 1931, but they lacked the performance the Army was looking for. The Colette X060 was the last version of the U.S. military's unsuccessful association with autogyros during the 1930s and 40s. Its slow loitering speed and almost vertical takeoff and landing capabilities met the military observation duties requirements. However, its inability to hover, limited payload, ground resonance problems, and the arrival of the Sikorsky R-4 helicopter kept it from production. This Vatsukorsky XR-4C helicopter served as the prototype for the R-4 helicopter and is displayed at the Smithsonian Udvar Hazi Center. The R-4 was Sikorsky and the world's first production helicopter with 130 hoverflies built, 55 going to the Army Air Force, 23 to the Coast Guard and Navy, and 52 to Great Britain. The Army Air Force used it mainly as a trainer, but 20 served in the Pacific and Burma theaters during the last 16 months of World War II. These 20 Army Air Force R4s performed liaison and rescue duties, including the first medical evacuations by helicopter. The R-4 Hoverfly was also Naval Aviation's first helicopter and carried the designation HNS. It was intended only as a naval pilot trainer, yet it soon assumed operational research and development roles, participating in actual life-saving operations, and served as the platform for developing hoisting equipment for search and rescue. In January 1944, the Hoverfly executed the first helicopter mission of mercy, flying through unfavorable weather to deliver blood plasma to victims of an explosion aboard the destroyer USS Turner in New York Harbor. This HNS hoverfly is on display at the Naval Aviation Museum. When compared to the R-4, the Sikorsky H-5 Dragonfly transported a greater useful load, was faster, and could fly higher. The U.S. naval designation was HO-3S, and it became the first helicopter employed onboard aircraft carriers for plane guard duty, standing by to recover pilots forced to ditch during flight operations. Dragonflies were fitted with folding blades and an external hoist and began shipboard operations in 1948, replacing fixed-wing airplanes. During the Korean War, it assumed a new role as a combat rescue helicopter, rescuing downed aircrew and performing medical evacuations of injured ground personnel. During its service life, the Sikorsky H-5 Dragonfly flew rescue and mercy missions throughout the world. This photo is of a U.S. Navy HO-3S Dragonfly, and this one is of a U.S. Air Force YH-3A Dragonfly. The Sikorsky R-6A Hoverfly II helicopter was a refined version of their R-4 Hoverfly as it had a more powerful engine and redesigned body. Although primarily an observation and liaison helicopter, Hoverfly IIs could carry litters in capsules on each side of the craft. 
Other special equipment included racks capable of carrying up to 650 pounds of bombs and floats for water operations. In 1946, the Navy issued its first contract for procurement of Bell's Model 47 helicopter, which was first designated the HTL Sioux, eventually redesignated H-13 Sioux. With two covered litters mounted on their skids, Marine Corps Sioux saved many lives evacuating battlefield casualties to aid stations during the Korean War. The last Sioux retired from naval inventory in 1973, and all told, the Navy procured 187 H-13s. This HTL Sioux is displayed at the Naval Aviation Museum. Early in 1957, the United States Air Force purchased two Bell H-13J Rangers to serve as presidential helicopters. Bell added two new features to the presidential 813Js, all-metal rotor blades to increase the helicopter's useful load, and applied special anti-glare tinting to the huge plexiglass nose bubble. During a simulated nuclear alert stage to test how quickly the chief executive and other government officials could depart Washington, D.C., this H-13 became the first helicopter to fly a president, President Eisenhower, and is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar-Hazy Center. Heller Corporation's Model 360 helicopter featured a new rotomatic cyclic control system that provided a high degree of stability, making the helicopter easier to control. During the Korean War, production shifted to the military with the Navy ordering 16, designated HTE, while the Army ordered hundreds of them, designated H-23, not shown. They served both branches in medical evacuation, observation, training, and utility roles with, with the medevac version carrying two external skid-mounted litters. The Naval Aviation Museum's HTE entered service in 1951. The Piasecki HUP, nicknamed Retriever, entered service in 1949 and served aboard every deployed aircraft carrier at the height of its career. Its primary missions were search and rescue and plane guard duties on board aircraft carriers. Its capabilities were enhanced by the installation of a rescue hoist that lowered through a floor hatch that was wide enough to allow for the passage of a loaded stretcher. A later version, the HUP-2S, not shown, was equipped with dipping sonar and flew in the anti-submarine warfare role. The HUP-3 held the distinction of being the first production helicopter equipped with an automatic pilot system though its unreliability precluded it from seeing much use. The Naval Aviation Museum's HUP-3 was acquired in 1988. The Sikorsky S-55, military designation YH-19, solved the center of gravity problems of earlier helicopters by shifting the engine to the front and placing the passenger compartment beneath the rotor hub. This is the first S-55 and served mainly at the Sikorsky factory demonstrating improvements to the H-19 series and generating flight data. It is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar-Hazy Center. The H-19 Chickasaw holds the distinction of being the U.S. Army's first true transport helicopter. It carried a 400-pound capacity hoist mounted above the door, and it could also carry an external sling capable of holding 2,000 pounds. During the Korean War, Chickasaws became the Air Force's primary rescue and medical evacuation helicopter. This UH-19B Chickasaw is displayed at the Air Force Museum. Stanley Heller experimented with ramjets mounted on the tips of a helicopter's rotor blades, hoping to make small, ramjet-powered helicopters practical and affordable. The Heller HOE-1 Hornet became the first production ramjet helicopter, and the Army and Navy flew a small number of these aircraft for a short time to test and evaluate the technology. 
The noise generated by the ramjets was considerable, but the most serious limitation was the ramjets consumed fuel at a rate of about 10 times what a piston engine would use. Originally a two-seat design, Sikorsky's S-52 incorporated four seats in its military HO-5S configuration and saw use primarily with the Marine Corps during the Korean War as an observation and scouting aircraft and for day and night medical evacuations. It carried wounded on internally mounted litters with an attendant, an improvement over other light utility helicopters that required the wounded to ride outside of the fuselage. It featured an opening front bubble for easy access, a rear-mounted engine configured to maximize internal carrying capacity, and had improved control and stability, which made it ideal for night flying. In July 1952, the Naval Aviation Museum's H05S-1, shown here, was one of the first examples delivered to Observation Squadron VMO-6, which performed most helicopter-borne medical evacuations for wounded Marines in Korea and is one of only a handful of surviving Korean War helicopters. This H05S-1 is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. Heller Helicopter developed the YROE rotocycle in 1953 to meet a U.S. Marine Corps requirement. They were looking for a single-person collapsible helicopter to support special operations missions and that could be airdropped to pilots trapped behind enemy lines. The Marine Corps did not accept the rotocycle for military service because of its slow 52 mile per hour speed, its 40 mile range, its vulnerability to small arms fire, and that pilots could experience spatial distortions at all but very low altitudes. This YROE-1 rotocycle is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. Designed by helicopter pioneer Frank Piasecki, the Vertol H-21 workhorse first flew in April 1952. With two main rotors, its long fuselage could carry either 20 fully equipped troops, 12 litter patients, and two medical attendants, or heavy cargo. Later adaptations allowed the aircraft to perform rescue and assault operations under combat conditions. Originally called the Flying Banana, the H-21 served with the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Army, the French Navy, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and the West German Air Force. The Sikorsky UH-34D Seahorse was a major advancement over its predecessors and was primarily employed in two missions. One was anti-submarine as it carried sonar equipment and homing torpedoes, and the second was as a transport that could carry up to 18 troops, double the earlier helicopters. It was the primary marine assault helicopter in the Vietnam War from 1962 until the arrival of the turbine-powered CH-46. This marine UH-34D, displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center, never served overseas, but has the markings of Marine Medium Helicopter Squadron 163, which saw extensive combat in Vietnam. Although capable of carrying over 20 combat troops, Sikorsky's CH-37 Mojave proves its greatest value in the transport of vehicles and cargo, loaded and unloaded through the clamshell nose doors. By the time U.S. Marines went ashore at Da Nang in the Republic of Vietnam in March 1960, only two of the Marine Corps' 20 helicopter squadrons still flew them. The Air Force acquired the command HH-43 Husky primarily for local base rescue and for fighting aircraft fires. A Husky on rescue alert could be airborne in approximately one minute with a fire suppression kit hanging beneath. Huskies often reached crash sites before ground vehicles arrived, and the foam from the fire suppression kit plus the powerful downwash of air from the rotors opened a path for rescuers to reach trapped crash victims. They were the first U.S. Air Force rescue helicopters to arrive in Southeast Asia and the last to leave. 
Their air crews save more lives in combat than crews flying any other Air Force helicopter. From 1966 to 1970, they performed a total of 888 combat saves, 434 air crew rescues, and 545 non-air crew rescues. Bell won the U.S. Army design competition for a new medical evacuation helicopter powered by a turbine engine that was designated HU-1A Iroquois. In September 1958, the first of 182 Hueys rolled off the assembly lines. In 1960, the Army promoted the idea of using helicopters rather than trucks when moving infantry around the battlefield and created the 11th Air Assault Division to test the theory. This concept was implemented several years later in Vietnam, where Army and Marine Corps infantrymen employed air mobile tactics. All branches of the U.S. military operated Hueys in every corner of South Vietnam and into Cambodia and Laos. This Bell UH-1P Iroquois served in South Vietnam with the Air Force's 20th Special Operations Squadron flying highly classified missions. This Huey UH-1H Iroquois Smokey III is displayed at the Smithsonian's Udvar Hazy Center. In 1967, the Bell UH-1M Iroquois was chosen to outfit Helicopter Attack Squadron Light 3, the first squadron of its type in naval aviation history. Three of the 27 Navy HH-1K versions of the Iroquois also served with HAL-3. Nicknamed the Sea Wolves, HAL-3 served in concert with SEALs and Navy patrol boats interdicting the enemy in the waters of the Mekong Delta. This helicopter is displayed at Patriots Point, Vietnam Experience, and this HH-1K is displayed at the Naval Aviation Museum. The Command H-2C Sprite entered naval service in 1962, providing the Navy with an all-weather helicopter capable of performing a variety of missions. The SH-2 anti-submarine configuration provided the Navy with its first dedicated anti-submarine warfare helicopter capable of operating from vessels other than its aircraft carriers. The SH-2F version, shown here, was equipped with countermeasures and additional equipment enabling it to conduct combat support and service warfare missions within hostile environments. The SH-2F Sea Sprite was retired from active U.S. Navy service in April 1994 and is exhibited at the Naval Aviation Museum. Sikorsky CH-3 is the Air Force version of the Navy's S-61 amphibious transport helicopter and a veteran of the Southeast Asia Wars. This vehicle, the Black Mariah, was attached to the 20th Helicopter Squadron. Painted flat black, hence the nickname, it was used for highly classified special missions. This VH-3AC King flew Presidents Nixon and Ford during the 1970s as part of the Marine Corps' mission to provide short-range helicopter transportation to the President. The Navy procured eight VH-3A versions of the S-3C King that were luxuriously outfitted with carpeting, radio telephones, a wet bar, and toilet facility. They were extensively soundproofed and armored, with special protection provided for the aircraft's electrical system and flight controls. Known as the Frog for its amphibian-like appearance, the Boeing CH-46 Sea Knight served as the U.S. Marine Corps' primary assault helicopter with over four decades of active service. It was the Marines' first turbine-powered assault helicopter and proved well-suited to the challenging environment of South Vietnam, where it began operations in 1966. By the end of U.S. military operations in Vietnam, over 100 Sea Knights had been lost to enemy fire. Since then, the Sea Knights served in nearly every major military action and supported dozens of smaller operations, 
ranging from embassy evacuations to humanitarian and disaster relief. The U.S. Navy retired the sea knight on 24 September 2004, replacing it with the MH-60S Seahawk. The Smithsonian's udvar hazy Center aircraft wears a special heritage paint scheme used in its final years of service that evokes its extensive Vietnam War service, including a mission that resulted in the award of a Navy Cross. The Marine Corps is the primary user of the Sikorsky CH-53C Stallion heavy lift helicopter. Sea Stallions have been in use since 1966 and are still used today. It is the largest and heaviest helicopter in the U.S. military and can either carry 37 combat-equipped Marines, 24 wounded personnel on litters, or 8,000 pounds of cargo. Procured in 1968 and designated TH-57 Sea Ranger, the helicopter remains the platform in which all Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard helicopter pilots are trained. Prospective pilots spend approximately 106 hours flying the Sea Ranger before receiving their wings. Although primarily used for helicopter flight training, these aircraft were also used for photo, chase, and utility missions. Its retirement began in 2023 and is expected to conclude in 2025. The OH-58 Kiowa is a family of single-engine, single-rotor, military helicopters used for observation, utility, and direct fire support. The OH-58A Kiowa is a four-place observation helicopter having a two-place pilot seating setup, although the controls in the left seat are designed to be removed to carry a passenger up front. During its Vietnam deployment, it was fitted with the M134 minigun, a 7.62 mm electrically operated machine gun. This Bell OH-58A Kiowa is displayed at the MAPS Air Museum adjacent to the Akron Canton Airport in Northeast Ohio. Sikorsky's HH-3 Jolly Green Giant was a CH-3 modified for combat rescue missions with armor, defensive armament, self-sealing fuel tanks, a rescue hoist, and in-flight refueling capability. With a watertight hull, the Jolly Green Giant could land on water and its large rear doors and ramp permitted easy loading and unloading. They performed combat search and rescue missions to recover downed airmen during the Southeast Asian Wars. A quarter of a century later, Jolly Green Giants participated in Operation Desert Storm and they provided rescue support in the early years of the Space Shuttle program. The Marine Corps' Bell AH-1J Sea Cobra helicopters flew combat sorties in the last chapter of America's experience in Vietnam. Its last Vietnam action covered the evacuation of the U.S. Embassy in Saigon in April 1975. This AH-1J Sea Cobra was displayed at the Naval Aviation Museum. The AH-1W Super Cobra entered service in 1986, supporting the Marine Corps, operating from naval amphibious warfare carriers and forward operating bases. They served on the front lines during Operation Desert Storm, where they destroyed 97 tanks and 104 armored personnel carriers and vehicles. It continued operations in the global war on terror in Afghanistan and Iraq. This AH-1W is displayed at the Naval Aviation Museum. Air Force Special Operation Forces used the improved Sikorsky MH-53 Pavlo Force to covertly enter enemy territory. They were capable of operating day or night or in bad weather, conducting long-range, low-level missions to insert, extract, and resupply Special Operations Forces. This MH-53 Pavlo Force served in Vietnam as an HH-53, then flew many more combat engagements in operations Desert Storm and Iraqi Freedom before it was retired. It is displayed at the Air Force Museum. 
The Navy based its new maritime helicopter requirements on the Army's UH-60 Blackhawk to achieve commonality and lower cost, maintaining 83% commonality with the UH-60A. While the Sikorsky SH-60 Seahawk specializes in anti-surface and anti-submarine warfare, several Seahawk variants exist, each fulfilling a unique role. The SH-60B has been a deadly part of the Navy's arsenal since the 1970s. It is packed with an array of advanced sonars and avionics and capable of carrying a variety of ordnance. It entered operational service in 1984 with its first operational deployment in 1985 and is being replaced by the Navy's newest helicopter, the MH-60R. This SH-60B Seahawk is displayed at the National Aviation Museum. The Eurocopter UH-72 Lakota is a twin-engine helicopter with a single, four-bladed main rotor. In October 2006, American Eurocopter was awarded a production contract for 345 aircraft to replace the aging Bell UH-1H and V Iroquois and the Bell OH-58 A and C Kiowa helicopters in the U.S. Army and Army National Guard fleets. The UH-72 performs logistics and support missions within the United States for homeland security, disaster response missions, and medical evacuations. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour covering the evolution of U.S. military rotary wing aircraft. Links to similar tours are found in the comment section below this video and more are added as they become available. This page may show you YouTube recommended links to similar videos.